So you're thinking about moving to Irving, Texas? Well, grab your popcorn because this is going to be the most extensive overview of the top eight neighborhoods in Irving, Texas. And we're going to do a couple of things for you. We're gonna start out on the Google Maps and show you each neighborhood where it falls inside of Irving, Texas, what's it close to, what's nearby. Then I'll give you a brief overview on that neighborhood. And then you're going to jump in the car with us and actually drive around that neighborhood so you can see it for yourself. So we hope you enjoy this video and we're gonna get after it right now. If this is your first time on the channel and you want to know everything there is about living in Dallas, Texas and the surrounding areas like Irving, then subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market in Dallas. My name is Levi, you know the team and I, we get calls and emails every single day of people just like you and you and you and you looking to make their move to Dallas. We absolutely love it. So whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, just give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email or even schedule a Zoom call all in the description below. Happy to help you make a smooth move to Dallas. So as I mentioned, this is going to be in a very extensive overview of the top eight neighborhoods in Irving. So let's just get started and jump in my computer. All right, well, welcome to my computer. And here we are, as we mentioned, we're discussing Irving, Texas today. And you can see that Irving is a pretty good chunk right up here in Northwest corner of Dallas. Uh, you can see right there, you've got the Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. So Irving pretty much cuts that in half. So if you're gonna be commuting, whether personally or business wise, then you're going to have a very short commute over to the airport. As you can see, uh, you've got downtown Dallas right here. You've got four, oh, oops, uh, move that over a little bit. You got Fort Worth right there downtown. So pretty easy shots to both. And then of course, you're going to have, uh, look at this, Six Flags over Texas right here. You've also got, you've also got, uh, uh, not only Six Flags, but the stadiums, Cowboy Stadium and Ranger Stadium is right in this uh, same area too. You've got uh, the water park, uh, Hurricane Harbor. So during the summer, especially that's a lot of fun over there. There's just a lot to do right there in the North Arlington area, which is gonna be an easy shot from Irving. But at the same time, you can see here, then also getting to downtown Dallas, just come right down 35. You've got the Stars and the Mavericks right around here if you want to you know come see a hockey or a basketball game or see your favorite team when you move here get in here right in that area of course have you got love field right here as well so you're right in between love field if you're more of a southwest flyer uh, you've got grapevine lake right here as well and that is uh, just north of irving and then right in the middle of irving let me clear some of this out Right in the middle of Irving, you've got uh, Lake Caroline all right through here. And you're gonna hear a lot about Las Colinas. That's one of the neighborhoods we're going to feature uh, specifically at the end because it's pretty nice. But otherwise that's kind of the major portion uh, right through here. Las Colinas is kind of the heart of Irving, but you can see how big Irving is. So uh, let's go take a look at the first neighborhood. We're gonna start down here and the Irving Heights, uh, South Irving, Irving Heights area. And let's see here, you've got, um, it's really right nestled down here uh, on the south side of Irving, right off of the Trinity River. You can see here, you've got easy access to, uh, you've got easy access to West Dallas. That is a up and coming neighborhood. So right around here, you're, you have quite a bit to do in the West Dallas area. A lot of great restaurants and bars going up in, in this area. So mainly right here at the heart, right on the other side of Dallas. So there's this awesome bridge uh, that crosses over. I think at nighttime when you're driving into Dallas, this, this bridge right here is one of the best views driving into downtown Dallas at night. But otherwise you have quite a bit going on in this area. So Irving just centrally located, very convenient to Dallas or Fort Worth if for some reason uh, you're working on one side and you're with somebody else that's working on the other side, then Irving would be a great option, but very diverse. And we look at uh, the first neighborhood, Irving, Irving Heights area, right around in this area. You can see if we zoom in a little bit more, there is uh, Trinity View Park right here. You've got some commercial aspect right here, uh, just of your shops, Little Caesars, hamburgers, 
Pizza Patron, um, Domino's, maybe that's Pizza Patron. <laughs> it's probably not the same as the tequila. You can see where my mind is at. Uh, El Oasis. So a lot, right, uh, a lot uh, to do right there. Uh, you know, very, a lot of restaurants and, and things to eat right there. You've got a couple of parks and then also you're close down here, not just to the Trinity Oaks Park, but uh, Lone Star Park. This is where the horse races are at. If you are a horse racing fan, then that's a fun place to visit. And then also you've got Running Bear Park over here on this side and you've got Irving Lake. So a lot to do if you're going to be on the south side of Irving, not that any of these neighbor, na other neighborhoods are not that accessible to this area, but otherwise it, it, uh, there's a petting zoo right there. So that would be fun for the kids. So you've got pretty easy access to everything and you're gonna be closest to downtown Dallas on the south side of Irving there. You can just uh, hop right down here to I-30. And of course, I-30 is gonna take you pretty much everywhere. If you wanna get over to Six Flags or Texas Stadium or see the Rangers play, anything like that, you can come down here to Mountain Creek Park. This is a great hiking uh, area as well. Love to go down there. It's uh, lots of elevation. So uh, some really, really good hiking trails down there. So I hope uh, that should pretty much cover it for uh, South Irving, Irving Heights. So let's come uh, jump in the car and check it out. All right, it's historically known as a residential area with mostly single family homes and the city of Irving is focusing on building new affordable homes in South Irving. The Imagine Irving plan will focus on improving transportation, urban design, community services and facilities, parks and land use in the neighborhood. So South Irving is located south of uh, 183 is one of Irving's biggest neighborhoods covering 25 square miles. The area is almost a city in its own right. Given its size and population, amenities include the Irving Golf Club, Trinity View Park, and Bilbig Lakes. A building uh, started in the 1940s and has steadily continued so you'll find a variety of home types. So Hidden Gym in South Irving is Running Bear Park. So bring your barbecue. The park features everything you need as a fun family uh, outing, picnic tables, basketball, baseball facilities, exercise stations, fishing docks, grills, playgrounds, and so much more. And some of the those trails wind through the park. Mountain Creek Preserve is another waterfront park available to South Irving residents. So the population is around 123,000. Home prices around 135,000. All right, so our next stop is going to be kind of downtown historic Irving, all right? So this is a little bit of the old down here. I will say there's yeah, there's not much going on around here in this area. If you've seen the other videos, you know I'm a fan of, you know I'm a fan of the old historic areas, the old historic homes, but I will say that the historic part of Irving is a little bit lacking just to be upfront. So there's not much going on around there. There's some really, there's a couple of good restaurants and spots to check out, but not really a place you could hang out. Kind of like in McKinney's historic district, you could spend a day there. But otherwise you've got, you know, if you just kind of want uh, to be close to around that area, there is some good homes around there. And again, you're gonna find some of the older homes, a couple, a couple of the historic homes throughout there. There's just really not a lot uh, as developed in the historic sense in this area, but still, it puts you close, you're, you're close to, you know, South Irving area as well, still close to all these other amenities we just mentioned with the last neighborhood, you know, close to everything else. And that pretty much really sums up the historic part of downtown Irving. But uh, let's just jump in the car and go check it out for ourselves. All right, if the historical vibe is more your style, you'll enjoy the Irving Heritage District. Main Street is lined with old brick buildings and vestiges from the early 1900s, but with an updated aesthetic. 
And you won't want to miss Centennial Park. It's, uh, it's an homage to Irving's first 100 years. A tree-lined walking trail follows the Delaware Creek, ending at the pavilion. The Heritage District is extremely walkable, making it easy to grab a bite and enjoy a cocktail not too far from home. The area hosts mainly, uh, mainly family-friendly events all year long. Downtown is home to the Texas Musicians Museum, one of the top conservatories in Texas for extensive music history. Favorite pastimes are browsing and shopping in the charming antique stores, visiting Heritage House and one of the oldest houses in Irving, exploring the historic train depot at Heritage Park. So expect this area to undergo a huge facelift in the coming years. You know, planning is underway for developers uh, to feature retail and residential that are all pedestrian friendly. The Irving Las Colinas Chamber of Commerce says the overall project includes more than 100 new homes along beautiful Delaware Creek, bike lanes, new sidewalks, and additional street parking for easy access to retail. All right, next on the list is the hospital district. And yes, it is close to a hospital. So if you're going to be working at Baylor Scott and White, which is one of the major hospital, uh, I don't wanna say chains, but I, I guess it's just, there's a lot of Baylor Scott and White centers around Dallas, Texas. So the hospital district uh, is gonna be mainly a lot of uh, professionals that work at the hospital. You're right in the center of Irving right off of 183. So you're gonna have easy access to downtown Dallas, to Fort Worth, even jumping up to the, going to the airport, you're gonna be five, five, 10 minutes to the airport to get over there. And again, if you're working at the hospital, then you could literally walk to work. And it's a, it's a cool area, a lot of big trees. You'll see that as we drive through. I really like it a lot, a very mature neighborhood lots of old growth trees, a lot of shade. And so it's it's a pretty cool little spot. And that pretty much sums it up. I mean, you've got a few places around here to eat and hang out, but most of the time you're going to probably do a little bit of a drive, except right across the street, you've got coffee, PJ's Cafe. That's a place from uh, New Orleans, actually. Uh, you've got Chicken Express, Jack in the Box. So, you know, if you're not into that type of stuff, Taco Bell, then you might want to get in the car uh, to get out for lunch, but you got a, a couple little places up here. Uh, Tio Carlos Mexican Latin Grill, so that could be good. But other than that, let's just go check out the hospital district. All right, the hos hospital district is a cute, close-knit community that only covers 0.32 square miles. And as its name suggests, the neighborhood is near a large hospital and one of the largest employers in the area. Residents of this area love that it's uh, centrally located to Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, the International Airport and has easy access to 183. Uh, it defines the western edge of the neighborhood and the Neighborhood Association is very active in hosting events and keeping residents informed about the city of Irving, other neighborhood associations and community groups that emphasize community involvement and seem to enjoy one another's company genuinely. Now residents report they love their neighborhood because it's safe, family friendly, historical, has lovely trees and is welcoming some 94% of residents on their homes and it's unique to Irving. The average age of the resident is around 55 years. Population is about 453. Housing prices is around 270,000.
All right, and right next door is going to be Plymouth Park. So here's another option if you're going to be working uh, at the hospital or even around in this major commercial area, you can see you have a lot going on right here because you have the intersection of 183 and uh, Irving Boulevard. You can see here we talked about uh, we talk about 121 being the toll road all the way up to uh, Plano and Frisco. So that does kind of merge into each other into 183. So they kind of become one at some point, but otherwise you have a lot of your major retail right going on right here. Target, Urban Town Center, Lowe's, uh, Discount Tire, Home Depot, Auto Plaza. So uh, pretty much a lot of stuff, Ross, um, David McDavid. I remember yeah, growing up here in Texas, always hearing those car commercials, David McDavid. Uh, it's just funny. You know, whenever I grew up in a small town in Texas, just south here of Dallas, and you know, you'd hear all these commercials for Dallas on the TV. And then uh, when you actually came and visited Dallas, you're always surprised, right? Driving around and you're like, oh, wow, there's Dave. And still to this day, 30, like 30 years later, I think about that when I see the David McDavid dealership. Uh, it got that jingle in my head. But anyways, yeah, you got Walmart Supercenter right over here, Red Lobster, Best Buy. So just the major corridor right off of Plymouth, Plymouth Park. So it's a, it's a well-established area. You can see there's even a couple of restaurants scattered in the middle of it. Uh, there's, uh, Story Road's kind of a, a, a major road that cuts through it. So if you're on one side or the other, you should be able to walk to some of these spots if you wanna get out in the evening and go walk over to grab a bite to eat somewhere. So a couple of little spots and then you can run uh, right across here. You've got, you got your Starbucks, you got Whataburger, Burger King, uh, Villa, Villa Brazil, by the way, Whataburger, <laughs> that's, that's our Texas fast food burger place. It's really good. I grew up calling it water burger, my pretty much my whole life. I don't think I was, uh, it was in my twenties that I realized it was what a burger. So, but probably whenever I say what a burger, you probably still hear that. I mean, I don't think I have much of a Texas accent, but Hey, you know, uh, but we, yeah, we just say water burger. You may think people are saying water burger but they're actually saying what a burger so anyways fun facts but uh that's our version of if you're coming from california uh, you probably like in and out if you're coming from new york you probably like hardy's so what a burger is our version of the texas fast food hamburger so anyways, that pretty much sums up Plymouth Park. Let's jump in the car and go for a ride. So Plymouth Park is a neighborhood that shares a small border with the hospital district and is located just south of 183. It's about one square mile. And if you're in the market for a modest single family home with a yard, you should check out some properties in Plymouth Park in general. The residences in this area are three bedroom, two bath homes, one to 3,000 square feet, and they sit on quarter acre lots. Home values increased nearly 15% between 2018 and 2019. JC Park has an adorable small botanical garden, a short walking trail, and a duck pond in the center. It's excellent, excellent for location for a relaxing summer evening. And if you've watched a beautiful Texas sunset, also nearby is JC Park Center for the Arts, the gallery home of the Irving Arts Association. Locals like to hang out at Joe's Coffee Shop on West Irving Boulevard, but the neighborhood has limited amenities. 80% of residents own their homes. Neighbors say they love Plym Plymouth Park for its freeway access, cleanliness, Friendly neighbors, parks, dog friendliness, and because it's quiet. Population about 3,700. Home prices are around 196,000. All right, next on the list is the Arts District, and we're just a slightly north of Plymouth, Plymouth Park in the Hospital District. So you can see here the Arts District, and of course you've got the Irving Arts Center. Uh, you've got uh, Brahms Ice Cream, uh, La Pupuseria, if that's the way you say that, Taj, Shot House. Oh uh, man, you can tell I really know my uh, restaurants around here in the Irving area, but. Uh, so it looks like there's some th things to do, some places to eat around, but again, you're just right here close to all of this commercial area, Fiesta Mart, uh, Toyota of Irving, but again, uh, McDonald's, Golden Chick, Whataburger, Starbucks, you got the Starbucks close by, that's really important. So you can see you're just kind of right in the middle of everything, but you're south of the Los Colinas Country Club. This is a really nice area. 
And really this is the cool thing over here is Lake Caroline. Uh, Lake Caroline is where they have, we actually have a full vlog tour on Irving. You can check out and this is where I start out on that vlog tour right through here. So you got some really cool restaurants and bars all around this lake. You can paddle board and, and go out on the lake and, and have some fun there. They say it's modeled after uh, the Venice canals. You know, I had a hard time seeing it, but hey, you know, if that's what they say they tried to accomplish, then I guess we'll just take their word for it. But otherwise, yeah, it's a cool spot. Uh, lo lots to do around in this area. Toyota Music Factory for some uh, concerts and things like that. You can always check out Benihana. And then of course, uh, you know, you got the country club if you wanna go golfing and let's see. So otherwise you're just right over there, a hop, skip and jump to this pretty happening spot. So I would say that if I was in the arts district, that's probably where I'd go hang out is over here around Lake Caroline, which is not too far. It's a pretty cool spot, but you know, let's go see it for ourselves and go jump in the car. All right, the Irving Arts District is a small neighborhood of 6,700 residents that spans less than a full quarter mile. The, uh, it has bordered on Story Road, Northgate Drive, and MacArthur Boulevard. The main attraction is the Irving Arts Center. It's home to 10 resident art organizations that provide cultural programs for the community. Arts District residents can also enjoy beautiful outdoor spaces at Woodbridge Park and Lee Park and the Recreation Center. Locals enjoy a variety of art district amenities such as Tom Thumb Florist, Half Price Books, and everyone's favorite auto mechanic is Fat Joe's on nor no North Story Road. Residents report that they love living in the Arts District neighborhood because it's family friendly, quiet, safe, clean. Neighbors are great and it's easy to complete many errands on foot. Median household income in the Arts District is around 55,000 compared to 61,000 uh, for the rest of Irving. The majority of homes were built in the 60s. Population around 6,700. Home median price around 210,000. All right, next on the list is North Gates Heights, uh, Northgate Heights, which is right up here. It's a really small community, just right on the other side of the Arts District. So pretty much a lot of the same uh, things that I mentioned about the Arts District are, are, are true here. You've got you know close access to golf courses. You, you're close to uh, Lake Caroline and everything that has to offer down there. So that's something you can always check out. You're just a hop, skip and jump down that way. Several parks that you can go and hang out, lots of water. Again, if you like paddle boarding and things uh, along those lines, then you can definitely check that out. University of Dallas is over here too. 
So if that's something uh, you're going to be attending or thinking about attending or want to continue in your education once you move here, then that's gonna be really close by as well. And, you know, as I said, there's, it's pretty much uh, has a lot of the same access to everything that the arts district does. So let's just go jump in the car and check out Northgate Heights. All right, Northgate Heights is just northeast of the Arts District. Northgate Heights uh, has, is bordered by Leland Boulevard and Northgate Drive. Median household income is around 71,000 and the neighborhood has a very educated population with almost twice the number of residents holding a bachelor's degree or higher compared to Irving as a whole. Building in the neighborhood began in 1960s and continued through 2014. Most residents work in computer management and sales office positions. So with few amenities, most res residents head to other Irving areas, as we mentioned, like over to Lake Caroline. The commute downtown to Irving is about 16 minutes. Some locals use relay rides for car sharing. Northgate Heights gets a 51 walk score, 29 transit score, 52 bike score. Residents enjoy strolling through Woodbridge and Cotton Creek parks. Populations around 355, median home price around 220,000. All right, our second to the last neighborhood. We're gonna skip over Las Colinas for right now because we gotta save uh, the best for last. But no, uh, let's jump up here to Valley Ranch, all right? Valley Ranch is a great location. You can see it's on the far north side of Irving. And you can see it's right up here nestled in between uh, a lot going on up here. Valley Ranch used to be pretty popular. I mean, Cowboy Stadium used to be here in Irving. And so there's a couple of cowboys that lived in Valley Ranch on some of the gated communities. And it was just uh, kind of all the rage back in the 90s. But once they built the new Cowboy Stadium out in Arlington, you know, a lot of that hype kind of left Valley Ranch. Uh, but you've got North Lake here. This is what's really cool about this is this borders Capel. Actually, North Lake is a part of Capel. And, and they have a lot going on here. They've got pavilions out here. Look at this rodeo goat, goat Cypress Waters. They got um, some stages out here, the sound. I mean, you can go out here for some some shows, some concerts. Uh, there's a couple of places to eat. Really cool spot uh, to come hang out and you could even walk around North Lake. So that's a great, uh, you know, amenity to have close to Valley Ranch. But otherwise you've got Valley Ranch Library. You've got a little bistro right over here. You've got uh, Samarian Park. You've got some water access. You got some creeks running through here. So really very scenic, uh, Valley Ranch, and this north side of Las Colinas is a little hilly too, so that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, let's see, Halal Bites, Honest Restaurant. Uh, so you can see here, you've got access to quite a bit as far as restaurants and dining, things like that you can get around to very easily. Uh, Sam Houston Trail Park right there. Uh, you got the Trinity River that runs all the way through up here. Of course, you're right off of 635, so if you're going to be commuting uh, to North Dallas, you know, Addison or even Plano. Then on this north side, you're gonna have pretty easy access right up here to Plano. There's several corporations up here like Toyota, Frito-Lay, uh, Ericsson. There's, uh, and, and also there's several Fortune 500 companies in Irving as well. It's also kind of known as a tech hub. You know, there are several tech companies 
in the Irving area. So Valley Ranch is a great spot to be. And I would say on this north, uh, north area is a pretty good spot of Irving, Hackberry Creek. You see you've got TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Panera Bread, Chop Shop, Cheddar's, Saltgrass Steakhouse, Delicious. Uh, IHOP, uh, you know, so everything right, running right along 635. This is a lot of commercial in this area, Mexican Sugar, Texas Roadhouse, Taco Cabana. So really a lot, a lot going on there. Uh, plenty of places, no shortage to eat around this area. You've got a golf club, golf club north of you. So really a lot going on in Valley Ranch. It's a great spot, some really beautiful homes. You'll like them, I, I believe, when we go check it out. And we should go check it out right now. So let's jump in the car and go cruise around Valley Ranch. So Valley Ranch is a desirable neighborhood directly north of Las Colinas. And so if not for the street signs, you wouldn't really be able to distinguish the difference between the two. So the community has a motto, more than an address, a lifestyle. So they plan regularly family focused events for its res residents who also get to enjoy the streams and bike paths that weave throughout the entire neighborhood. Sam Houston State Trail Park sits on the eastern edge of, of this community with its 22 mile walking and biking path along Grapevine Park. So for the past 30 years, Valley Ranch was home to the Dallas Cowboys training facility and up till 2018, I didn't realize it was that recent. The team trained here most days and it wasn't out of the ordinary to see them at local cafes. The 36 acre training facility is now transforming into an exclusive residential community. So the population's around 38,000, home prices around 360,000 for the median price. All right, well, last but not least, but hey, one of the best ones is Las Colinas as a whole. As we mentioned, it's really a major part of Irving, just dead center. You can see I, it's just, it's a big area inside of Irving. So really it should just be considered on its own, but it is considered a part of Irving. But again, we talked about it. It houses all of this great area that, that we were talking about earlier with Lake Caroline, all these golf courses, creeks, walking paths. I mean, there's just so much to do. Uh, you can see you're right there on the airport. So, so something to keep in mind. Uh, you'll probably hear some planes from time to time. I don't think it's a big deal, but hey, you know, they don't, there's not a lot of them that fly at night, so shouldn't bother you too much. But you'll probably see some planes coming in here and there. But other than that, it's a great spot. I think you're really gonna love these homes. There's so much to do. There's Look, there's an In-N-Out Burger. We've been putting in some In-N-Out Burgers for all you Californians, all right? So know that if you're leaving California, you don't have to leave your In-N-Out Burger. They're all over the place now here in Dallas. So you should be very happy about that. And overall, just Las Colinas is a great area. One of our team members um, lives in Las Colinas, absolutely loves it. He's a younger fellow, but uh, really enjoys it quite a bit. So he calls that place home, loves it. You can see even right here, Dallas Love Field, how close you are if you like to fly Southwest. Of course, other airlines fly out of Love Field, but that's where their main hub is. 
But that pretty much covers it on Las Colinas. Let's uh, get in the car and go check it out. So Las Colinas makes up 14 square miles of the city. So most locals think about Las Colinas, they think about higher end or upscale. The neighborhood consists of equal residential and commercial use. And seven 2018 Fortune 500 companies have headquarters in Las Colinas. Maintaining outdoor and green spaces is important to the city, and Las Colinas has over 190 acres of parks and green belts. If waterfront entertainment is your thing, then you'll enjoy Lake Caroline, Mandalay Canal, and Water Street, areas full of retail and restaurant options. Continue your A game at the Tournament Players Course at Four Seasons Resort and Club, one of golf's premier destinations. Las Colinas website boasts it's not only the fifth safest city in the country, but one of the most diverse zip codes in the nation. Top ranked businesses are Vitality Bulls, Desi District Grocery, and Andalus Mediterranean Grill. Aligning with the more upscale prof, uh, profile, the cost of living in Las Colinas is higher than the Irving average. Uh, the median home value rose 10% in 2019. Of the homes currently listed for sale in the area, median list price is around 500,000. Population around 33,700. Again, uh, median home value is around 281,000. All right, well, that covers Irving. We hope you found this very helpful. This was a lot of fun making this video. And Irving is, is just one of the top searched areas in Dallas-Fort Worth, so we wanted to make sure you got a good idea. We do have a lot of people moving into the Irving area, as we mentioned, a lot of pros, but we do have a pros and cons on Irving as well. So there are a few downsides when it comes to Irving. You definitely wanna check out our other video about that so that way you have the full picture we have a full vlog tour and a full map tour as well although this was a pretty uh pretty good map tour on top of that so we hope you found this helpful 
And again, whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, feel free to give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email. Happy to help you make a smooth move to Dallas. You could even schedule a Zoom call below if you want to meet in person. And main thing you can do to help us out is not only just give us a call, but uh, if you're gonna stay watching on the computer, then check out the next video coming up. I'm sure it will probably be about Irving, but we also have many other videos all around about Dallas. So if you're trying to get an understanding of what Dallas is like, then check out another video. And until next time, well, we hope to see you around town.